Because you cannot say the Lord is tempting me. It's an own desire who lead us into that direction. So the sermon this morning is, the title of the sermon is, The Adventist Journey. And I'm going to compare the Adventist journey with the Adventists of the Exodus. All right? Let me see here. To learn that Israel journey from Egypt to the promised land is a type of the Adventist journey from the to heaven. In another word, when I said Adventist here, I want you to put your name there. Because you are Adventist, isn't it? So the, the journey is your journey. It's my journey. And I already read that verse. The Lord, remember, the Lord delivered ancient Israel from the bondage of Egypt and led them through the wilderness into the earthly promised land. Can you remember that? Okay. And then he said, the exodus from Egypt and the experience of more than Israel or the people attending Bepengari Church today here, or whatever church, uh, the experience of Israel, more than Israel, to the heavenly Canaan are two similar but not identical religious movements. So what we are going to do is similar to the Exodus, but not identical. Okay? The experience of God's people under the Exodus movement in the past were typical of those under the Adventist movement. We need to remember that the history on the ancient Israel was recorded as an example for the church today. And I, now I want you to open First Corinthians chapter 10. And I'm not going to read until you open that particular section because I'm going to tell you something here. First Corinthians 10. I need to find it myself here first, where I am. I need my glasses. I cannot see anything now. I did the cataract. They said they're going to be better, but it's not better. First Corinthians 10. It said here, we are going to read. Look at what it said. For I do not want you to be ignorant. It's talking to you, particular, and to me. I want you to pass. I want you to... Stop in the word that we are reading. For I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brethren, brothers, that our forefathers were all under the cloud and, and, and they all passed through the sea. See, he's talking about the experience of the exodus. They were all baptized in Moses and in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock and that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, I want you to understand this. Nevertheless, I want you to underline this first, uh, first Corinthians 10. It said, Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. Now the question when I read this, I ask myself, how many of us here are pleasing the Lord there? And then I would like to call you, you need to go yourself and think about, and then you need to look at it in the mirror, and then you need to talk to the person in the mirror, and then you need to say to the person in the mirror, how faithful I am with my Lord. And he said here, nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. Wonderful. Oh, terrible, isn't it? Their bodies were scattered over the desert. Now, listen very careful now. Now this thing occurred as an example to keep us from setting our heart on evil things 
as they did. Now, I'm not going to preach. I got a sermon. I got four sermons about this particular verse. Four sermons about. Because the attitude of God in the desert is terrible. And then you need to read Psalm 105 and Psalm 106 every week. Because in Psalm 105, at Psalm 106, the story of Israel in the desert is still there. How they were guided by the Lord and how the people react. And the purpose of the sermon is to make you uneasy. I do not preach to entertain you. I preach to make you uneasy in your seat. Why? Because I know that the Lord Jesus is coming soon. And then if you are not prepared, you are going to get in the desert. You are very silent. And he said, I will look one Bible story. Uh, there are a few. But I select only one Bible story. Okay? To explain that to enter the heavenly Canaan, we cannot do it in our own way. There are some people here, and in my ministry, they are doing their own way to come in to serve the Lord. They come when they like it. They come when they want it. They do whatever they like it. Then we need to remember that God is a particular God. Do you say amen? It is a particular God. Right? And then he said, but we need to do it in the way the Lord demands in his word. Say amen. The Lord demands to you. The Lord demands to me how we're going to do it. And then he said here, so we need to study the Bible. We need to study the spirit of prophecy and follow the instruction given to us there and apply it to you. Say amen. Do not read it just for read it. Read it and apply it to you. And then you need to say very honestly how I am doing with my God. How I am responding to the Lord in my own life. This story that I'm going to tell is found in Joshua 5, 13 to 15. Could you please open your Bible in Joshua? I want you to move your Bible. When you're ready, I'm going to start reading. In the meantime, I'm going to drink a glass of water. It, this is fresh, isn't it? Yeah, okay. <coughs> They're all there? Everybody there? It said here, And it came to pass, when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted at his eyes, and looked, and behold, a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us? Or for our adversaries. So he said, No, but as a commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Look at the attitude of Joshua. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshiped and said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? Goodness me. Have you ever read the word of the Lord in your own time? And then suddenly the Lord is speaking to you. And then you realize that he's speaking to you. What do you do? Do you fell in your thing? Lord, I want to obey it. Have you done that? I've done it. Then, then the commander of the Lord army said to Joshua, Take your sandal off your foot. For the place where you are stand is holy ground. Do you remember to whom else God said the same thing? To Moses. Huh? And Joshua did so. Here, this is for me. But I would like you to take it for you. Here is a proof that Joshua was in the presence of God. And he knew it. Mere angel never accept worship. Is it true? Angels do not accept worship. It was Jesus that came down to help Israel in their fight against Jericho so they could take the promised land. The Bible tells us that 
they went against Jericho, and we know this story. What happened in Jericho? They won the battle. Is it? What they did? They marched around. How many times? Seven times. And they blow the trumpet. Can you imagine if one of these uh, American or Australian called all of us and said to us, we are going to fight to this particular country. I want you to carry your trumpet. We are going to fight with trumpets. And then he said, blow the trumpet, and then I'm going to do the rest. And then they obey. They obey what God told them to do. And then when they uh, did, they're running around Jericho. What happened? They said, shout. In the last time when you go around, you need to shout. And they shout. And what happened? The wall tumbled down. So through the power and the help of the Lord, the city wall crumbled. And the city fell to the ground in Israel. And Israel conquered the first city of the promised land. So remember, they are moving themselves into the promised land. And God is guiding them. Now you need to think, we Seventh-day Adventists, we are moving to the heavenly ground. We are moving to heaven, to the heaven. Then when the Lord is speaking to you, you need to obey. You need to do the things. Can you believe that? And then he says here, the Israelites say, oh, this is going to be quite easy now. That's what they said. All we need to do is march around the city, and the wall will crumble down, and the city will belong to us. Wow, what a, what a simple thing. Okay? That's what they said. So let's go now and fight the next city, they said. Let's go. Just go. Well, I, know, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this. They had had a great victory when they had gone into Jericho. All right? Now... They suffer a terrible defeat when they went against Ai. How do you pronounce it? Ai? Ai. 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 So they went to the next city. They were thinking, whoa, it was so simple, Jericho. Now we need to. What they were doing? They were doing it in their own way. That's the point. We are not going to get to heaven doing it in an old way, the way that you want it. You are not going to get there, brother. Do you know why they were defeated? Yeah. The reason was that there was a sin in the camp. Sin in the camp. Listen very careful. Someone who was tempted to take something from Jericho made impossible for Israel to win battle and then enter into the promised land. We are all, I want you to listen to this, we are all Adventists from Verpengari Church and from any Adventist church, we are all moving into the heavenly Canaan. Are you with me? Picture yourself, you are moving there. You want to get there. This is the purpose of you coming to church because you want to learn more and you need to be close to the Lord Jesus and you study your word and the spirit of prophecy. So we are moving there. But because something happened in the middle of the camp, you are not, the camp, all the people are not going to enter there. They couldn't. You are not going to win the victory because they are seen in the camp. Meaning, we need to be very careful how are we conducting ourselves before God? I cannot see you. I cannot read your heart. But God can. All right? And if you are doing something wrong, all is affected. Why? Because, okay, because of cherishing sin, they could not stand before the enemy. We are not going to stand before the evil scheme. As a group, listen, the Lord said to Joshua, stand up, because Joshua, when, when, they did, when they went to Ai, they were defeated, Joshua fell into the ground and began to say, Lord, why, why do you do that to us? He was like this, praising to the Lord, why are you doing this? We got a victory 
in Jericho. But now, look at what happened. So the Lord said to Joshua, stand up. What are you doing down on your face? Israel has seen it. They had violated my covenant, which I command them to keep. They had taken some of the devout things they have stolen, they have lied, they had put them with their own possession. That is why the Israelites cannot stand against their enemy. They turn their backs and run because they have been made liable to destruction. I will not be with you anymore, Jesus said to Joshua, unless you destroy whatever among you is devoted to destruction. Very harsh. Joshua learned that the defeat was caused by sin in the camp. Someone had disobeyed the Lord's instruction in the conquest of Jericho by looting. Do you know what is looting? Taking something that belonged to you. The Bible tells us that it was one person that took something, and of course, some of his family members knew all about too. God has said, do not take anything from Jericho. Because all this need to be consecrated to the sanctuary. This is belong to me, God said. It's part of my tithe. You are going to conquer Jericho, but then I'm going to give you the instruction how you need to do it. And God has given the instruction to us too, how we need to do it. What the Bible said about temptation. Let no one say when he's tempted. We read that, isn't it? I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil. Know that he himself tempt anyone. Be, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desire and enticed. Then when the desire has conceived, it, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, bring forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers and sisters. This is the message. This is the warning given to us in James. Now, the question that I asked myself when I was preparing this sermon was, if only one person was tempted and took something, why God is blaming all Israel for what Achan has done? Can you understand what I'm saying? For instance, we need to preach the gospel. And we pray continually. We fast. We are going to do it. We do things. But if somebody of you is doing something wrong, God is not blessing us at all. No matter who is doing something wrong here, God is not going to bless the group. Why? We see in this story that sin is a corporate affair. It belongs to all of us. If somebody does something wrong. Sin in the church is not an individual thing. A little living actually caused the whole lamb to rise. Can you understand this? The history why I can teach us the solemn lesson that for one man's sin, the displeasure of God will rest upon a people or a nation. Listen, listen. she's saying this. If that she's inspired by the Holy Spirit, till the transgression is searched out and punished. Sin is corruption in his nature. One man infected with his deadly leprosy might communicate the time to Satan. Have you ever heard the say, they said, one rotten apple can rotten all, come and say, the box. See, yes or no? I tested this when I was in Stanford as a pastor. In Stanford, the best place, the best time I spent in Stanford because it's all the food, the veggies, everything is there. I enjoy it. 
and I bought a box of apple. And suddenly one was rotten. And then I didn't notice. And eventually I began to look for the smell. I said, where did the smell come from? So I went and looked and I began to move the apple. They were not only one, they were more than one rotten. Have you ever done that? Do you know that? So you see, that's why sin is corporate in the church. And then he said here, those, this is for me now, and this is for Roya as an elder. This is for any leader in the church, this particular section here. Those who occupy responsible position as a guardian of, the, of people are false to their trust of they do not faithfully search out and reprove sin. You find this in the Seventh-day Advent Commentary, Volume 2, page 906. No, 996. So those who occupy responsible position, this is a call for me as a pastor. That when something is wrong, I need to find out and then we need to talk about it. That's God told Joshua. Get up. Sanctify the people and say, sanctify yourself for tomorrow because that say the Lord God of Israel. There is an accursed thing in your midst. Wow. Somebody's drew the thing between us. That's what it's all about. You understand? Oh, Israel, you cannot stand before your enemy until you take away the accursed thing from you. Wow. Interesting. For me, when I read this story, I, I, so many times, but I read it, I said, Lord, thank you for impressing my heart to talk to my people this Saturday. Interesting to see the process God will follow to discover the guilty one. How God is going to discover the guilty one, this is it's, it's amazing. God gave I can several call. All right? God was saying, I know where you are. Does God know you? Say yes or no. Does he know what you, when you do something wrong? Yes. Okay, I know where you are. I want you to repent and confess your sin. I can <clears throat> have seen the defeat of Israel at the hand of the people of Israel. A-I. A-E. How do you pronounce that? A-A. A. -A. A. Ah, Australian, man. Language is complicated, man. I. This is Spanish. I. Simple. All right. Has seen the defeat of Israel in the hand of the people of, you say it? A. -A. Okay. I can knew that they had been defeated because of his sin. He knew it. All right? I can had heard the announcement that Joshua had made to the congregation. Next day, Joshua said, the transgressor was going to be found. He knew that he's going to, uh, God is going to look for him. And yet, I can, in ni neither of these two cases, did I can step forward and say, I am the guilty. He never said that. He kept his mouth shut. God gave him a few other calls. In the morning, therefore you shall be brought according to your tribes. And it shall be that the tribe which the Lord takes shall come according to the family. Look at how God is giving the chance to I can to repent. And the family which the Lord takes shall come by household. And the household which the Lord takes shall come man by man. With all this thing that the Lord is doing to identify him, if you were the guilty one, what would you do? I would like to come and say, yeah, you're going to find me. Better just step forward and say, I am the guilty one. Because God has given you the chance to recognize. Is it? Then... God is telling to Joshua, then it shall be that he who is taken with the accursed him, uh, accursed thing, shall be burned with fire, and 
and he and all that he has because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord and because he has done disgraceful thing in Israel. Very harsh thing that God is telling here. Some people sitting down there, you don't like this word. But I like it. Because that's the way the sin is, is being done. Very harsh word and serious judgment of God there. God, through his process, was actually calling Hakan to confess and show sorrow for his sin. He's telling him, in all the process, he's telling, come on, fellow. Come on. Do you think that God knew where Hakan was? Yes. He knew. All the way through. Could God have told Joshua, hey, go to Akan tent. He is the one that stole the stuff. Don't worry about anything else. Just go there. Could God could say that to Joshua? He could, but he didn't. Why? Because he was given all the way through, he was given a time to Akan to repent. Do you know that the spiritual prophecies say that one sin shares it? If you share is one sin in your life, if I share it one sin in my life, I'm not going to enter there. No matter how many times you come in and listen to a preacher to preach to you, but you're still sharing your sin and you don't confess it, you are not going to get there. Brother, get it into your mind. Don't play church. Be sincere. Be honest. And then he said here, Oh, that the spirit of prophecy say that one sin shares the will and all all the power of the gospel. No matter how much we preach, we are not going to have success because there are sin in the camp. Do you know that keep is? Uh, uh, what I said. Do you know that the spirit of prophecy that one sin shares the will keep is at out of victory over the enemy and keep us out of heaven? Do you know that? If you don't believe these are not my word, I am paraphrasing a step to Christ what she's saying. My own word, well, I put it there, but you need to read a step to Christ, page 34. She said it in a better way. It is impossible, it is impossible and serious to believe that we can enter into the celestial canon overcome the enemy at the same time cherishing a favorite scene in our life. What do you say? It is impossible. If no one told you before, you need to put it in your heart today. And then he said, so Joshua, the story, Joshua rose early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes and the tribe of Judah was taken. He brought the clan of Judah and he took the family of the Sarhites. And he brought the family of the Sarhite men by men. And Sabdi was taken. Look at all the time that God is given to Achan the opportunity to repent and confess. Then he brought his household men by men. And Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Sabdi, the son of Sarah, of the tribe of Judah was taken. You read everything in Joshua there. As God proceeds run, I can have seen the tribe of chosen, the family chosen, the household chosen, the men chosen, identify the guilty, and yet I can choose to hang on to his sin. Terrible, isn't it? This is a lesson for us here, brothers and sisters. That's what I'm preaching this sermon. Now Joshua said to Achan, my son, I beg you, give glory to glory, God of Israel, and make confession to him, and tell me now what you have done. Do not hide it from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, indeed, I have sinned against the Lord, God of Israel, and this is what I have done. And then he said what he did. Do you remember what he did? He said, when we went to Jericho, I saw this link, whatever, and I coveted it. I saw and I coveted it. 
Do you remember this story in the Garden of Eden? When Eva came close to the tree, and Eva came close to the tree, he said, I saw the fruit, and I want to eat it. Remember this? I can did not confess his sin. He admitted it at the end. Now, it's a difference, my brothers and sisters, to confess something voluntarily than to admit it when you were, were find out. Are you with me? Are you understand? It's different things. There is a difference in admitting and confessing. When you confess, you do it by your own will. You understand, you repent it. You go and do it yourself. But when you are fine now, what are you going to say after you've been fine now? What are you going to say? The only thing that you need to say is to admit it that you've done wrong. Nothing else. I can acknowledge his guilt, but when it was too late for the confession to benefit himself. All right? It was too late. Now, my brothers and sisters, to study this thing that's happened so many years ago have no benefit for you and me if we don't apply those concepts to yourself and me. You've got no benefit. What is the point for me to begin to teach you about this story that happened so many years ago? Sounds and yeah, maybe. What is the application for me today? That is the story that all about. You need to say, how I am doing in all my life with the Lord? You need to review your old self. I can have seen the army of Israel return from I defeated and disheartened. Yet he did not come forward and confess his sin. He has seen Joshua and the elders bow down to the earth in grief, too great for words. But he still Keep silence. He had listened to the proclamation that a great crime has been committed and had even heard his character definitely stated, but his lips were sealed. He saw thrill with terror as he saw his tribe pointed out, then his family and his household, but still he uttered no confession until the finger of God was placed upon him. Then, when his sin could no longer be concealed, he admitted the truth. We don't need to go to that point. You don't need to. If something is, you are doing wrong is better, you need to recognize and confess the Lord. Because if you are a member of the church and you got that problem, the church will never be blessed. And it's a tough thing, I'm telling you. Why? Because your sin there, a hidden sin, is no individual anymore. It becoming a corporate sin because you belong to the church. You understand what I'm saying? Do you? You are very quiet. The sin is not anymore only your problem. Is belong to the church now. Why? That's why the person, we recommend the person to make a public decision. And the public decision is done when you get baptized. And when I was baptized, I was saying to my Lord, Lord, I want to walk in your way. I'm not going to tell a liar anymore. I'm not going to fight anymore. I'm not going to swear anymore. I'm going to eat the right thing. And I'm not going to drink the wrong thing anymore. You understand what I'm saying? You make a, a vote, a commitment to serve the Lord. Maybe this is the reason why we as a church, people want to go to heaven in their own way. And I'm preaching to you that we are not going to get there in our own way. And this is a story here for us to remember. There is a vast difference between admitting fact after they had been proved and confessing sin not only to ourselves and God. 
I can confession only serve to show that his punishment was just. There was no genuine repentance, no contrition, no change of purpose, no abhorrence of evil. I found this. I don't have this book. I tell you, I don't have it. But I, that all the books that are in internet now, and I look for this, I can't story, and I was reading, coming this to me, and I say, eternity past. Never hear about this book. So I tell you, it's in the internet. I don't have it. Maybe I'm going to buy it. But this is, there is no genuine repentance for I can, no contrition, no chance, no purpose, no abhorrence of evil. These are remarkable statements to me. I can sin teach great lesson for us because we are also marching to the heavenly land. Is it true? As so already told you, everyone here, we are marching there. But then we need to be very careful the way that we are doing because when you do something wrong, it's affecting the whole church. It's no, it's going to no anymore your personal sin anymore. Because you come into this church or whatever church you join. In our journey to the celestial Canaan, we have enemy to overcome here in order to get there. Is it true or no? The first enemy is the dragon. Huh? And who is the dragon? Revelation 12, isn't it? Satan. And Satan is doing anything to stop you to get there. And he's stopping anything for me to get there. And sometimes he stop me to do the right thing because he, the Lord presented to me word, very harsh word in his word. And then I had to correct it because I said, Lord, how am I going to tell this thing to these people, lovely people here? Are you going to offend it? But then I read in Galatians, he said, I'm here to please people. I'm here to please God. And I conform myself, saying, Lord, I'm here to please you. Now, if my word at heart, don't blame me. Blame the word of God. Because you are reading it in a different way. That is to, uh, therefore, it is no good for us to hang to a sure sin. All right? We need to put the whole armor of God. Remember this in Ephesians. What we can stand against, that we can stand against the scheme of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principality, against power, against the ruler of the darkness of this age, against a spiritual host of weakness in the heavenly place. This is our warfare. Do you know that when we come in to share, angels come in here too? To make you to doubt things, to make you to say things that is not appropriate, to do something wrong. Even the devil, before we come into church, trying to disturb me. Because if, if I, I choose a church and then I, my wife forgot to put the button in the church because I lose it, I get upset about it. That you have done this, and I began to shout my voice. But now I need to be careful. I look for another church and I keep my mouth shut. Why? Because what is the point for me to come and admonish you from here, from this pulpit, if I'm doing the wrong things? What value that I have? That's why I don't want to accept anybody to use my pulpit. If I don't see the person doing what is right. Because I don't want to hear somebody from here telling me what to do when this person is not doing it. What do you say? Can I, um, can I admonish you? Can I tell you the thing that I'm telling you if I'm not doing what I'm telling you? What authority will I have if I'm not doing it? If I say to you, you need to retain the toy, man, and then I'm not doing it. What authority do I have? Do you know Jericho? The thing that where belong to Jericho, God said, all this belong to me. Don't touch it. It's mine. It's my time. This is the way I read it. This is belong to me. This is my time. Now the 10% doesn't belong to you, brother. Put it in your mind. Doesn't belong to you. Don't play with the things. 
If you really believe that God is the creator, if you really believe that God is your maker, your king, your redeemer, that thing doesn't belong to you. And then you need to give it with a cheerful heart, honoring God because he is your maker, your king, your redeemer. You cannot just put your hand in the pocket and then be like, oh, I have to give this money to the church. No, you're not giving to anybody. You are retaining what belongs to the Lord. Say amen. And then he said, when I saw, see, here is the confession of Icon. When I saw among the spoil a beautiful Babylonian garment, 200 shekel of silver and wedges of gold weighing 50 shekel, I coveted them and took them. And there they are hidden in the earth in the midst of my tent with the silver under it. Let me ask you a question here. This question. Was a sin to see those things? Answer me. Was a sin to see those things? No. All the soldiers, all the people who were fighting to Jericho, they saw the same thing. Yes or no? They saw the same thing. It was no sin then for the people to see those shekel of silver and gold. Everybody saw it. Of course, no. For all the Israelites that fought against Jericho saw the thing. There is a difference between temptation and sin, brothers and sisters. And it said here, temptation is when something momentarily crosses your mind. All right? Sin is when you allow the thing to lodge in your mind and it becomes an obsession and then you take action. I want you to understand this. The next one, Martin Luther said this, we cannot keep the bird flying over our head, but we can keep them from making nets in our hair. So when a, a a temptation coming to Martin Luther, what he did? It was a, a, a bird here. Get out. Get out of here. You understand? When the temptation comes to you, it's not a sin. But if you allow that thing happen and then you do an action, then it's a sin. In conclusion, I could preach all day because you don't need to go anywhere Saturday today. And plus we all lunch here. What may I can seem so offensive to God? Do you know? I tell you already. Simply because Jericho was God tithe of the land. Now, could it be, this is only my thinking, could it be that because we are not returning the tithe to the Lord as it is, we are incurring in something wrong? You judge by yourself. It was the first city that Israel conquered and God had said, do not take anything because all need to be dedicated to the sanctuary. You read that in Joshua's say. All right? Listen, if it is serious, listen very carefully, my brothers and sisters. If it is serious to steal from men, how much serious is to steal from God? Something that doesn't belong to you. A tithe need to be returned because it belongs to God. It does not ask no it does us no good to hang on to sin thinking that we can enter heaven, that we can overcome the scheme of the devil while we cherish our sin. How can we take heaven as our possession? Very complicated. By keeping ourselves close to Jesus, that's the only way. By studying our Bible, this is the second way. And the spirit of prophecy, that is the way we're going to get there. Study your Bible. Do not expect that the pastor in 20 or 30 minutes is going to tell you everything. We all need to spend time. Bend your eyelashes, brothers and sisters. Burn it. I burn my eyelashes studying. My wife is, what is she? My wife is, what time are you going to come to bed? It's 10 it's 11. What are you doing? Burning my eyelashes to learn and studying. Writing things down. 
asking the Lord to bring it back to my memory. May the Lord bless you so we can continue in our journey to heaven, trusting and obeying. Do you say amen? Do you agree? Stand up if you are agree, please. Stand up. We are going to sing the last song. Stand up. I need to be sitting down. You need to, well, need to stand. Let's just pray. Father in heaven, here is your people. Your beautiful, wonderful people. That you want all of us to be faithful to you until the end. <clears throat> you want us all to trust and obey and follow your instruction. And believe it and act. Father, is anyone here? Is not doing the right thing. I pray, Lord, that you speak to him through the Holy Spirit. So any person we can reconsecrate, and everyone here we can reconsecrate, and then nothing will stop for us to preach the gospel to others. So I preach, I pray, and I thank you, Lord, because you hear our prayer. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray. Amen. We're going to sing.